Often, when I think of a game, I think of the story, how it controls, and how it makes me feel. Usually underpinning the visual experience is an auditory one, and I'm not just talking about voice acting or sweet sound effects, but rather, the music. With the 8th generation of consoles somewhat coming to a close with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S releasing, I wanted to go back and talk about some of the music from that particular previous group of consoles that really spoke to me. Greetings Legionnaires! <laughs> I just wanted to take a few minutes today to talk about all of my favorite music that came out in the last generation of games. You know, it's just become kind of part of my daily life to just listen to this stuff and well, I just want to share that all with you here today. So. Let's hop to it. Oh, but before we get started, just remember, music's pretty subjective, and I'm not going to go over every game. But either way, let's cue the music. A theme song for a game is one that needs to strike the tone of a title, and sometimes never utters one word. That is exactly what Aloy's theme from Horizon Zero Dawn does. This excellent piece of music, composed by Joris Deman, The Flight, and Niels Vanderlist, greets those patient enough to linger on the load screen of the game just long enough. There's a tragic beauty found here. The tune truly encapsulates both Aloy and the game to me, a hopefully somber piece that provides an adventurous undertone. I still get goosebumps when I hear this one, and my heart legitimately swoons as I bask in the ethereal sound. Just a prelude to what lies before you in this wonderful title. Reimagining an adored franchise is a monumental task, but reimagining a well-known gaming theme song can be tough too. However, Bear McCreary did just that when it came time for God of War. If you're unfamiliar with Bear's work, please go check out his efforts on Godzilla King of the Monsters. So good. We aren't talking about Godzilla though, but rather the god killer Kratos. While I could probably pick out many of the songs found on the soundtrack, I wanted to single out a track called Deliverance. To me, this particular piece is very evocative of not only Kratos and Atreus' journey, but also to my own imagination. It feels like it's telling a smaller version of the story on display. High energy, driving strings, and this hair-raising orchestra choir combo make it feel like a true epic. My recommendation, put this song on, close your eyes, and either picture the over-the-top spectacle that is God of War, or make up your own heroic tale in your mind. There's often this return to these three specific notes, sung by the choir and played by the instruments. Bum, bum, bum. They act as this pillar to return to, and just really embody Kratos to me. You can really feel the struggle persistent throughout the piece, almost as if it's a fight taking place right before your eyes. My personal favorite segment starts around the 4 minute and 22 second mark, and for those that recall it, that was actually the section I used for the 2018 Critical Review's Game of the Year's Award video intro. This is one I revisit often, for inspiration, or just to get pumped. Well, I just talked about a piece that returns to three specific notes, let's talk about one that returns to four. Gears of War 4, to be more exact. A good portion of the songs from the soundtrack circle back to this particular quartet of notes, and I really love it. Taking into consideration the number of the series and baking it into the main theme is brilliant! The songs here also provide that harrowing horror vibe that this game tries to recapture. Gears has always had this aesthetic of destroyed beauty, and I feel that many of the songs on offer here retain that feel. The sweeping strings punctuated by the rest of the driving orchestra conjure thoughts of a big budget action film. Ramin Djawadi is an excellent composer, and I'm happy to see one of my own personal favorite franchises, which already had a great theme, get so much attention in the musical department. Final Fantasy XV was an ambitious game that suffered a bit by the fact that many story and gameplay elements weren't there right from the get-go. However, one aspect that stood taller than any other in the game, to me, was the music. Yoko Shimomura absolutely crushed it with this one. From the pulse pounding veiled in black, to the sorrow inducing tones of Somnus, to the sinister ferocity of Hellfire, this soundtrack has a ton of versatility. It sets the backdrop for an incredibly grand scale adventure and never misses a beat. The pieces do such a good job of plucking moments from Noctis' journey and cranking up the feeling to 15. Please go listen to these gems, they are easily my favorite facet of this particular game. Also, the Chocobo theme here is this great high-energy hoedown Spanish guitar hybrid, and I love it. I've adored Final Fantasy music for a long time now, 
so it isn't surprising to me that Final Fantasy VII Remake also had unbelievably good tracks. My favorite example might be Let the Battles Begin, as it appears in many different forms throughout the game. A version for sneaking, a version for fighting regular troops, and a crazy one featuring a choir making it feel like some of the best music I've ever heard. All the songs here are of the highest quality and caliber. Regardless or not if you have a nostalgic fondness for this game, the tale being told by these instruments and voices is truly awe-inspiring. I could go on and on and on all day about this particular soundtrack, but I highly recommend you check it out for yourself. Also, One-Winged Angel Rebirth is now the de facto version of Sephiroth's theme, a stunning and terrifying composition that is just as iconic as the character himself. One of the biggest surprises of this generation, for me, was the announcement of Devil May Cry 5. A game franchise I have adored for ages was finally continuing onward. The themes from Devil May Cry 3 and 4 are ones I return to frequently, so it was going to be hard to match that level of musical excellence on a personal level. Thankfully, Casey Edwards came out swinging with some amazing tunes, with Devil Trigger as the new bangin' theme. Although I do prefer Dante's theme Subhuman, or Virgil's Fairy the Light, each one of these really does an excellent job of summarizing the characters, their motivations, and backstories. They also complement the action wonderfully. Suffice it to say that these new songs have entered in alongside my old Devil May Cry favorites. Speaking of big surprises, I had no idea how much I'd fall in love with Monster Hunter World when it released back in 2018. One incredibly important aspect of the game is the music, and how it informs gameplay. Different tunes play when you're about to engage in a fight, when you're hidden from sight, and when a new monster enters the fray, along with pretty much everything else you do in the game. I'm blown away by the fact that each monster has a dedicated track, and how that changes when you pull off a successful mount when the drums really kick in. The soothing tunes of the hub areas, the adorable melody that plays when palicos are preparing a meal for you, and the triumphant theme that plays when you slay your quarry amplify everything. I adore almost every aspect of this game, and when it came time to discuss music, I couldn't leave it out. While many game soundtracks on this list are part of massive AAA endeavors, there was one for me that stood out that operated on a much smaller budget, Cuphead. For me, when I think of the game, the visuals come to mind first, but to really capture that old-timey cartoon feel, the music had to be on point as well. From the title screen, to roaming around the map, to the insane boss fights, each track found here is pitch perfect. These songs will also stick with you because, if you're anything like me when it comes to skill, you'll be hearing the boss themes again, and again, and again. A wonderful game that the soundtrack really bolsters the desired tone. Finally, I want to talk about a game that music is not just a part of, but is woven into the fiber of the story. Persona 5. This collection of tracks is so deeply tied into the fabric of the game that every time I hear a piece, I am immediately transported to a moment in this suave journey. Wake up, get up, get out there will always take me back to that first mind-bending trailer. Life will change means that a path has been established to the boss and it's time to get to work. Beneath the Mask reminds me of relaxing rainy days spent wandering the streets of Tokyo. Lastly. Last Surprise pulls me right back to the blisteringly fast skirmishes, for a turn-based RPG that is, that can end in an instant. The inherent oversaturated style of the game gels so well with these trendy tunes. What I adore most about a few of these are the uplifting messages found within. One track makes you literally want to get up and get out there to experience this world we inhabit, while another reminds you to allow life to change, and not to get hung up on retaining your own personal status quo. Kudos to Shoji Maguro and the team for composing this mentally arresting music, and to Lin Inazumi for killing it on the vocals. Even if you've never played this one, please, please, PLEASE go give it a listen. Legionnaires, thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I sure did. Now I'm just doing like a, like a dance to some music. I hope you're hearing music, because all the music I hear is in my head. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you for those who made it to the very end of this video. Leave a comment talk about music. It'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Also, huge thanks to our patrons who actually made this video possible. Uh, without you, well, we wouldn't do this stuff. And by we, I do mean me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You can't really see most of these dance moves because it's just like up here. 
But if you could, you'd be worried. Oh, yeah. All right. Until next time, Legionnaires, just remember to adapt and overcome.